Oida, was geht ab Leute, Team Mobile hier. Heute mit dem zweiten Teil der Top 10 Momenta von der YCS Rimini 2015. Und da haben wir auf Platz 5 aus der 11. Runde Yang Xing gegen Necros. Und der Necros Spieler gibt dem Yang Xing Spieler Trishula. Und der revanchiert sich in den nächsten paar Runden mit seinem eigenen, den echten Trishula. Ein Battle zwischen den Trishulas. Und mal schauen, wer gewinnt von den zwei. Und dann das zweite Game. The two MSTs are foiling his plans, stopping him dead in his tracks. Yeah. So that's Trishula. Yeah. Draws a card for Maxi and now he's gonna get Trishula. He had a big C water of the Yang Sing in hand. Um after he drew for the turn he has another card that we might see before it gets banished. Um he ah, it he was an so MST. He, he, he drew a mystical space typhoon yep. from Okay. Uh, Maxi. So he's left with a big sea water of the Yang Sing in hand, and that is it. Yeah. Wow. That's not much. No. <laughs> okay, so suddenly Fabio Fenaroli is coming back. He survived one Trishula. Is, um, Giovanni is playing one Trishula only. Um, so as long as the Trishula stays on the field, he's not going to get Trishula again. Doesn't sound like a very important statement, but that sometimes that can be a very big difference maker. So, so suddenly Fabio seems to be like at least somewhat in this again. Still 3,900 life points, not too bad. Yeah. So, yeah, Yang's in creation here. He's finally he's gone and set that typhoon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been quite good actually to activate that before um, yeah, advancing to the damage step, for example. Well, he he wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, no, I mean, if he would have activated it, uh, set it in his very first turn. Yeah, still, it, it can only destroy face-up ones, I think. Or is it, is it not? Am I just crazy? Uh, yes, you're right. Target one face-up. Yeah, good point. <laughs> I just looked at the fact that it's a trap card, and that's pretty much, yeah. Okay, so this time, um, Fabio trying to attack and getting a extra activation out of Yang Sing creation, but that's yep. not going to happen, thanks to Typhoon. Yeah. But he still gets to search something else for the effect of the destroyed monster. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. The best, the best scenario here possibly is to go into Tauti, attack over the um, Senju, wait till the opponent's turn, and then synchro during their battle phase into a Goyo Guardian. Or just not. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. Well, still a five. What can he make with a five? Mm hmm. <laughs> uh, Amadi's. He's got. He's getting yet another monster out. Oh, he must have drawn that for turn. Um. But okay, so here's Trishula. <laughs> <laughs> he's showing his opponent like this is the real Trishula. This is how you do it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Here's a Trishula. <laughs> well, there you go. So. The irony of <laughs> Trishula banishing itself is uh, infinite here. Yeah. So, you know, remember when I was saying about not having to worry about leaving cards on the field? Wow. Well, it's it's basically like, well, you Trishula me, I Trishula you back. And that wow. tri that Trishula is actually on 3-2 as well. <laughs> yeah. Because of uh, because of Swanee. Der vierte Platz ist aus der achten Runde. Unser Spiel äh, Clifford gegen Necros und es steht 1-1. Die sind in Time und der Clifford-Spieler hat Scout aktiviert, obwohl sie in Time sind. Ist dadurch 800 Lebenspunkte im Nachteil. Und der Necros-Spieler versucht halt die ganze Zeit jetzt die letzten paar Runden mit Valkyrios und Unicor auf Valkyrios immer wieder zu recyceln und zu stallen. Und es sieht nicht gut aus für den Clifford-Spieler, bis in der letzten Runde er eine kleine Überraschung auspackt. He's kind of stuck on the, so he's he's decided to pay with Scout. Now this is huge. Yeah, he's he's now losing. <laughs> as as it stands, he he will lose in in uh, five turns time. Yeah, I mean that at first that sounds like a bold prediction, but if you've ever seen a an extra time match with Necros, you know exactly what's happening there. Yeah. Exactly, like it's it, you know it sounds like a kind of a, a bold blanket statement here, but but he is he's he's on left he's on less life points. It sounds obvious, but you know I he's on less life points in time. Yeah, it's that's something. It's not that's that many situation turns. you never want to find yourself in. No, and not uh, at all. But at, at least I hope there's a chance that he cited out of solemn warning, for example. Yeah, well at this point it doesn't like. It super doesn't matter about any other card in his deck. He has to just put some damage on the board. Yeah. 
and uh, Matej really takes a risk here. I mean, uh, Clifford's in time, uh, risky as it is, because of the fact that they have to um, play with a card that is just paying life points all the time. Okay, here's he gonna go with um, the carrier hitting play. Oh no, that's monolith. Yeah, so um, he's going for a different play. Yeah, well, he's gonna pendulum summon. And then he's going to tribute one of those to try and bounce back the Unicor. So he's going to tribute Carrier to bounce back the Unicor, most likely. Yeah, so that targets that. And then Dillashan just puts it, puts the Unicor back and goes, <laughs> hold on just a second. Because <laughs> he does have a Necros of Trishula. Yeah, but but he, yeah it wasn't a great move to play that. Yeah, I don't know why I mentioned it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's an option. Yeah. Sometimes so you want to consider them all. Yeah. Okay. So and still, there's the Valkyrie. So this, this is so important. So Valkyrie's effect now. This is um. This is this is great. We've not actually seen this combo yet. This is a fantastic combo. So when the Great Sorcerer is banished, you get to send Exa from. You get to send an Across monster from your deck to the graveyard. Um, He's going for he sure. He seems to have gone for sure it. <laughs> Which okay, that's fine. Um, but that allows you to fill up your graveyard, so usually people would send Exa, and then you can use Exa's effect. But in this case, he's got a Necros Mirror, and he's going to be able to use that with the Shurit that he's just sent to the graveyard. I, I don't know why he he didn't get Exa, but, but that's okay. We can get past things like that. We can <laughs> continue to see... Let's hope he can get past that. Yeah. So that's the usual combo, whether he like drew it or something or, or what, I don't know. Is there a chance he sided out of it? Potentially. Because he only wants to like play the life card, so to speak. Yeah. And we've seen it in the first game, clocking up his hand at one point. Yeah. So he's going to go get a Necros Kaleidoscope. Now this is quite interesting. He's gone to get Kaleidoscope. Now we will see... See where he goes from here. Now, his opponent does have Recreate and Vanity's Emptiness. Yeah, it's like a, a double, a double whammy, double royal flash. Yeah. So, as far as this situation is concerned, right now, it's not looking great. Even, but he's he's gonna be able to just uh, hang in there with yeah. the Valkyrus. Yeah. Oh, definitely, he can do that. So he can just summon. So uh, he sets a Necros Mirror. <laughs> All very interesting. All very interesting. This uh, this line of plays. He's thinking. He's just pointing over those back rows and going, "Can you just pick those up, please?" <laughs> okay, there's a I, I, don't, I don't know why he said mirrors, but but it's okay. Okay, so that's great. That's fodder for the Valkyrus that he's going to be going and getting with that Manju. How many necros uh, monsters or cards does he have in the graveyard that he needs for Valkyrus to function? Uh, he has to have one, at least. Yeah, at yeah, least I, I know, but so yeah, far he's... How many does he have right now? Two. Well, need, uh, yeah, two, but, but neither of those you want to be yeah. um, you want to be using. So um, I think the next move here is probably to play a Manju, which is going to get recreated. Nope. <laughs> no, no touchy decky for you. <laughs> <laughs> Kaleidoscope, nope. Manju, nope. He yeah, has one of those one sided games where somebody's just saying, St wait a minute. So let's see the Bryanak being discarded here. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it has to happen. <laughs> yeah, there's not much else you can do. Yeah, he's going to throw a Valkyrus out on the board. There we go. He's left he with sneaks it. out. It's left with a Trishula and a Unicor in the hand. That's that's enough. That's enough turns. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's a it's a it's a good move to to leave Unicor in the graveyard as opposed to the Bryanak because if you draw an answer, then you can use Bryanak to get whatever you want. Whereas Unicor is only as powerful as your graveyard. Yeah. So in this particular situation, it is better to have a Bryanac. And that must be super frustrating for Matei, because he he does have all the answers. Mm. He, this d he does have a scout. He does have a 
Valencia is empty nest. He does have a Reckly 8. And still, at the end of the day, he's not going to deal any damage thanks to Valkyrus. Yeah, well, in this situation, I'm thinking that he should just pay for Scout. Oh, no, because he, yeah, yeah, pay, pay, like, pay for Scout. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm again, he, he can't, he needs to get rid of his own vanity's emptiness. Yeah. He's actually locked himself down. He, his only real out to these multiple Valkyruses is to play, um, a, the ap Apocryphal Towers. Right. Because it, it, we and can't negate. We don't even know if he sided into those. No. But yeah, he's completely locked himself down here. I, I, I've really no idea what he, what his plans are for this. Unless he like tributes uh, tri tributes one of the helixes to destroy his own vanity's emptiness or something like super crazy. So he's tributing both of those for a stealth. Helix, helix. He's gonna destroy this. And what else? Yeah, he, he simply can't respond. So that's, yeah, that's, that's getting destroyed. And now the vanity's emptiness. Uh, does it say if a card leaves the field or if a card ends up in the graveyard? No, it's it's if um, the the owner of Vanity and Emptiness... Uh, so he's actually uh, returning it to his hand with stealth. Ah, okay. So he destroys the the set next to mirror and returns the Vanity and Emptiness to hand. That's that's a fantastic move. Yeah, that's a lot better than what we could come up with here. Yep. So here we go. He's he's you know he's threatening the board here. <laughs> that's one way bit. to put it. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit, yeah. But he's going to attack and there's a lot of yeah. Like it's, it's really interesting. It's, yeah. it's like I I don't, I don't know what's going through his head because he's just going to discard Bryanak to get another Valkyrus and then that's it. Yeah, that seems like real cute, but at the end of the day, it's not going to do enough. No, and I don't think there's any cards in his deck that can that can avoid a Valkyrus. Right. You need something like a Book of Moon, for example, mm -hmm. that can turn the target face down Yeah. when you're attacking. Like and um, dis Displace the target on it? Yeah, there's there's nothing there, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. He, um, he's he got a Denko Second. <laughs> so he, he could very happily uh, normal summon that Denko Second and just be like, so are you going to play Emptiness or what? <laughs> 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 because... <laughs> If he overlays into an Exciton Knight, then bad things are going to happen for Matej. Really bad things. <laughs> so let's see where he goes with this. Well, there's Denko Seca. Recreate will negate Denko Seca. But still, is, is the summon of Denko Seca okay? Can we enter an open game state? Yeah, I mean, the Vanity Sentinel is not going to get flipped. No, we're, we're still in a closed game state, apparently. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, so is an open game state okay? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> All right. Yep, so discard Bryanak, go and get a Valkyrus. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward plan. That's, that's, that's it. It's not that hard. No. I'm. I'm. I. I. I really want like some kind of crazy thing to happen <laughs> in this last turn. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's been a real it's shame. It's got to be a little bit anticlimactic here. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's still like this is amazing. He's you know he's he's getting the Valkyrus. Is doing exactly what he needs to do to 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 close this match out. Yeah. Delishan is absolutely just in control of this game here. He has absolutely the weird thing nothing is like else to be done. If this game would last like one or two more turns. That is not the case. He he might be like losing instantly. I mean, he could still return it from from the graveyard with a unicorn or something. But, but he that runs out eventually. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. If the if the game just continues for like one or two more turns, it, he, there is nothing he can do because obviously Mate has. Oh, so much <laughs> here we go. <laughs> He's just uh, paid for scout and got towers. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, he did decide into the towers. That's that's important. To we're, know. we're in business. We're in business right all now. All of a sudden. Here we go. <laughs> uh, bounce both of those. Swing for game. Anyone? <laughs> 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 yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. This must be the worst feeling in the world. Yep. When you're like, I got this, I got this, I got this under control. I just need three Valkyrus. And, and you can tell this is yep, nervousness it. from Dilashan and Kredoran. Let's have a read of this. All of it, don't. I, d I don't know what's going on. There was no special that's summon that's there. It. 
That's it. <laughs> he's looking like he's going to try and play Valkyrus. Let's look at the towers again. But yeah, wow. the towers <laughs> did make all the difference. Coming in <laughs> from the side deck. He waited until the last, last moment. moment. Yeah. But that perfect wow. strategy. <laughs> excellent, excellent strategy. Yeah. Auf Platz 3 haben wir da Piran von CCG aus den Top 16. Er spielt Necros und der Gegner gibt ihm Maxe und er nimmt die Herausforderungen an und will ihn notikern, trotz Valkyros und Maxe. Und mal schauen, wie er das machen wird. Um, Valkyros. The Valkyros. But obviously, uh, Matteo is not going to let that happen. He's going to be playing the Maxe. Yeah, that's so that would be the moment in time. So can, he, can he play around this here? Does he have a Valkyros as well? Yeah, okay, so he can, but he already used his 12. Oh, that's damaging. So the, the way to play around Maxi in this matchup is so that you um, so that you don't leave cards on the field. You usually send a 12 so that you can summon Unicorn and Valkyrus, yep. which is one summon. And then you can... Um, Tribute them both away. Yeah, so, well, you, you do give your opponent another card by um, overlaying into uh, like a, a Ghost thing. of Emerald or something. <laughs> yeah. And then tributing them both away. That's like the easiest, the easiest way to get rid of three monsters. Um, but why is Kaleidoscope still on the field? It has resolved. Okay, it's gone now. Um, All right, and we we will need to restart quickly, and we're going to be offline for two minutes apparently, and that's the only way to get the stream going again. Yep. So. <laughs> If you think they're going lights out, no, that's uh, what we have to do, guys. Okay, so Piran here is, uh, you know, he's, he's playing through this maxi in the hope to just win this turn. Right. He's taking the max C challenge, as some people <laughs> call it. Yeah, but that's only really good if your opponent doesn't have Valkyrus, right? Yep. Oh, well, no, Valkyrus targets in the graveyard. But both of these conditions have been fulfilled. Yeah. And um, the one way to play around it, um, at least from a while ago, uh, that has been, th these guys have been telling me, has been, uh, I think, Gungnir, right? Yeah. So, so you can get rid of the uh, attacker. Yeah, but Piran but he's not. He, he does play. He does play it. I think. Um, no, he doesn't. He doesn't even play Gungnir. No, doesn't even side it. Right. So no Gungnir for Piran nope. means bad news for all the Germany fans. Yeah, but it's possible uh, that he has so little cards in his hand here that he's going to be able to. Um, oh, masquerade, <laughs> of course. He can overlay into one of four masquerade, and uh, that's gonna just. <laughs> get him through Valkyrus. Oh, there's an option I didn't see. Yeah, I forgot about that hat trick there. So, we're going to have a read of Masquerade now. Let's just get the card text up for you. Wow, so Piranaski going for the Valkyrus challenge. Yeah, so basically, Masquerade uh, during the battle phase, uh, if an opponent's monster effects activated, you can det detach a material from Masquerade, um, negate it, and inflict a 800 to your opponent. So you're doing even more damage this way. Um, Matteo is still... Yeah, that's actually like 8,000, no. exactly. <laughs> Matteo is double-checking. Auf dem zweiten Platz haben wir von der fünften Runde einen Moment. Zwar spielt Infernoid gegen Clifford und Clifford packt ihm halt erste Runde Tower aus. Und das Witzige fand ich ist, dass der Infernoid-Spieler einfach nur immer den Daumen hoch gibt. Ja, ja, mach einfach. Fand ich ganz witzig. Einfach einen auf, juckt mich nicht. Und dann packt er einen coolen Move aus, den ich bisher so noch das. nicht gesehen habe. Yeah. So, um ganz um, leicht über Tower rüber zu kommen. Then you can attack over towers, no problem. But yeah. we, um, we see here that uh, Sino doesn't have that card right now, so he's going to have to go digging through his deck to try and find that. Right. So Luca is going for that play, and um, is there any risk involved, or do you always want to go for it first turn? No, this is this is exactly what your deck's designed to do. You just make this play, and then. That's there. So we see the two pendulum scales set up here, and as the pendulum swings, we see the turbo tower. 
Right. And this seems like a very bad trade. You're losing three cards and you're getting just one out of it. But you were saying this is perfectly worth it. Yes. So uh, Towers is almost unstoppable. <laughs> so it's unaffected by spell and trap cards. Um, and it's unaffected by any monster effects with levels or ranks below its very amazing 10 stars. Right. So you need something with 10 stars to deal with it. Yeah. Also, all monsters that are special summoned... Um, lose 500 attack and defense. Now, the big the big factor here is that Onunchu is the t 10 stars as well. So its effect, when it is on, on summon, Onunchu destroys all of the monsters on the field, which just immediately gets rid of towers. Right. Now, um, because Luca had such a great hand, he didn't necessarily um, lose too much advantage by getting this towers out because he got to draw three cards in the end phase. Right. So he still has a decent amount of cards in his hand. Um, but unless uh, Zeno can do anything this turn, then he's going to lose. Right, because those monsters in the extra deck, they can come right back yeah. at him. You just pendulum summon, um, put another towers on board even, and then, yeah. Yeah. So let's let's see. And of course, he is playing Onunju, yeah. the t Turkish ten. Like, uh, by the way, if, if in case you're not familiar with this, the Infernoids, their names, um, are basically the the stars that they have in different languages, and the size of the country decides which one is um, sp uh, standing for which one. So Turkey is the largest country out of all the countries that are giving names to the Infernoid monsters. Onunchu has 10 stars, and the Turkish word for 10 is, in fact, Onunchu. This is how it works. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I know, <laughs> well, because I'm translating them. At some point, we were really curious. We we're like, wow, these are very interesting names. What are those? And um, all of them are the name for the level in the respective language. So Antra might be the Latvian word for like two or three or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell you all of them. I just know this is how it works, which is quite interesting. Yeah. So here we see the the new card Decatron. So that must be a one because it's a one star. Possibly. I w oh yeah, I wonder what language Decatron possibly <laughs> be. Yeah, um, um, Decatron doesn't sound like um, like a language, but yeah, I know that for the for the small ones, this is definitely uh, for def definitely for Onunchu. I think Antra, Harmadic, Patrulea, for all of them, it should be it should be some version of of the. Uh, the number in uh, some language. Okay, so here we see number, s I think that's number 62, Galaxy Ice Prime Photon. Yes, right? it is indeed. There we go, we can bring it up for you guys. Yeah. And um, it has, well, it has a rank, it doesn't have a star. Yeah, but so that still is affected. And he's going to go up into Galaxy Eye's full armor Photon Dragon. Is that... Yeah, we're we're waiting for the car to pop up on our app. But yeah. um you wanna you wanna <laughs> Yeah, let's have a look let's have a look at the effect of uh of that card. So we're currently looking at Galaxy Eyes full armor um, Photon Dragon. This one says th uh, you can also special summon it that way, which he just did. Once per turn you can target up to two equip cards, equipped to this card, attach them to this card as exceed materials. Once per turn you can touch detach one exceed material then target one face-up card, your opponent controls, destroy it. And and, well, and it has 4,000 attack points. Okay, so that's how you're going to get over that towers. So it's it's going to go down to 3,500 because of towers effect to um, to make all special summon monsters lose 500. But, yeah, and then he's able to use its effect to detach one and destroy that scout. So that's basically why Sino Peters was that relaxed when he saw the towers hit the field. He was very relaxed. Yeah, he he was um, just sitting there. He was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna take it. I I can deal with it." And on Platz 1 have we Peter Groß from Runde 4. We are his Shadow Gegner with Cosmo Knechtet. What was very funny was Peter wanted bei dem Turnier, wie er meinte, einfach nur Spaß haben. Und wenn man den Gegner so hat knechtet, dann hat man auf jeden Fall Spaß. Ich hoffe, das hat euch gefallen. Wir mal liken, subscriben, kommentieren, checkt unsere anderen Videos ab, checkt unsere Sponsoren ab und ciao. It's gonna be able to get around on his this construct effect, but he has diffusion. Yeah. And here's the retaliating scene. <laughs> there we go. This is macro on legs. Yeah. And it's so, so good against Shadows. You have explained that yesterday when we first looked at that card. Yeah. Um, pointing out that 
since the materials for the fusion are being sent not to the graveyard but being banished instead, they don't trigger their graveyard effects? Nope, they don't. They don't get any effects. Um, and yeah, I mean, and, and when when retaliating C gets sent to the graveyard, you get to go and search for your max C. I think what we're seeing here is a, a Co um, a chained L shell fusion. Yeah, that actually that makes that makes so much sense because he's going to be able to. The materials are going to go to the grave. Yeah, yeah, he's going to resolve the L shell fusion before the retaliating C actually makes it to the field, which that's is an, great. That's an excellent pl way out. Yeah. Even even though, but since Peter has a second one. Yep, we're gonna, we're gonna see. Wow, this is the mother of all chains. <laughs> This is actually insane because we're going to see one retaliating C hit the field and, okay, Michelangelo's body language right then yeah. very much said, it's really? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to do this to me? All right, let's recap really quickly. A retaliating C can be special summoned from your hand if your opponent activates a card like Monster Reborn, anything, a spell card that special summons a monster. Yeah. It's not very good against Monster Reborn, but it is amazing against any sort of fusion summon or ritual summon because since it is a macrocosmos on Lex, the materials are no longer being sent to the graveyard. So that happens. Peter Gross yeah. found his answer in his side deck and changed it to a Shadol fusion. Michelangelo Moily has a perfect answer with an L Shadol fusion, chaining that to the first retaliating C. However, Peter Gross has a second copy of Retaliating yeah. C. I mean, just look at... So he has to give up four cards here. Yeah, for, for one monster on the field. Yeah. And he's not going to get any effects. What's, what's even better is the second Shadol Fusion has to resolve because he can resolve it and summon another construct. <laughs> so he, he loses one construct. It doesn't trigger in the graveyard. Nope, it gets banished straight away. <laughs> and he's just going to diffuse And there's a the diffusion. Construct. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Game, set, and match for Peter Gross. What a knockout combination. I think we've never seen anything like this. That was a spectacular chain. Yeah. And, like, you mentioned this before. Sometimes you don't want to draw all the cards from your side deck.